So let's get caught up in the points in the 125 East going into the final round. Holman's out in front, Treadwell in second, and Mesley in third as we move into the 250s. You know how tight that battle is. Sebastian Wall with that 20-point lead on Morgan. Lange in third. He's still in the mix. Holland in fourth. And Craig Decker in fifth. Marco Duby on the outside in sixth. Okay, we'll get all the flagmen out there right now. So you guys get yourself suited up. And uh, 9 o'clock is what we get going. All right, with JSR having his race face on. Brian Cox. Machine Racing's Chuck Mesley on that number 9 CR125 Honda. Chuck's wearing our helmet cam here today. Walt, this is race day morning practice. You can see Chuck coming off the tunnel jump. Big step down. Just cases it, but able to clear it quite well. Really good here. Fast right-hander in dry conditions. Down into what's called the elevator. Come down here, upshift to fourth, pinned over the natural double. Chuck backing off here. It's a little sketchy, you know, landing that rough. Uh, ruddy mud, you can end up on your helmet real quick. Technique, everything out here today. You want to exaggerate all your body positioning. Your braking has to be done in an upright position. You brake a little bit sideways, you're going to fall down. Your chuck has a little bit of a moment. The mud's sucking them up, keeps the engine running. Another thing out here in this mud is preserving the clutch. The riders are going to be using their transmission a lot more than their clutch. They're going to be actually using that first gear to preserve the clutch, to keep the RPMs up. Many off cameras on this wall track too are going to play a factor. Many little gullies. Here we come around into a gully. Rider stalls in this gully. Chances are he's never going to climb back out. Attrition, attrition, attrition here at Wall. Okay, Chuck, you just came off the track. First 125 practice. Uh, talk to us about your conditions. I mean, because it's obvious it's a quagmire out there. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty sloppy, but there's it's getting some good lines, so you can uh, you can hook up in some good spots. You're you're able to do some of the jumps. Uh, it's, it's not as bad as everyone would think it would be, so it's going to be some good racing today. All right, Brian, special feature as we head into our final day of racing. Here's our top three point getters of the 250, a little season highlight. Start off with the man they call JSR. Thanks, Mark. John Sebastian Waugh, arguably the top Canadian racer. He's been a hero for us Canadians the past four or five years. He's been competing in the States. And when John breaks a top ten or gets a good U.S. result, it's big headline news all across Canada. We've been watching him for years. Now this is his first full year doing a Canadian series. He's made cameo appearances. He's come here to win the championship this year and proved he is the number one rider. John Sebastian Waugh is in the best shape of his life. There is not an ounce of fat on that body. He is just chiseled. Here's a tail of the tape. John only needs 31 points to clinch it here at Walton, and he might just do that for Blackfoot Honda. Blair Morgan, a known slow starter. No points in the first round here in the 2001 Outdoor Nationals. He gets a fourth in the second 250 in the second round, and the confidence started to flourish. Coming into round three, this guy was on fire. There was nobody faster on the track. That relationship between Blair Morgan and Al Dick started to flourish, and he started to win motos. He was the only rider in the National Series this year to clean sweep in the 250s, and he did it twice with Jean Sebastian Waugh on the track at the same time. This guy is incredible. This is the fastest I've seen Blair Morgan ride in his career. Don't forget, this guy's got two number one plates under his belt. Seven moto wins in 2001. 337 points after nine rounds. He's got to win both motos and hope JSR goes down to take the crown. Darcy Lance, number four, that Richmond gal with Kawasaki. He was our early leader in the 250s for the first two rounds. Bit of a mid-season lull for Darcy. Then he comes on strong at the end of the year. This kid, 18 years old, he is the future of Canadian motocross. He holds the key for us as far as the world stage goes. He had the second moto win, dialed in at Blackstock, threw it away like Morgan by. Still went 2-2 for the day, showing its consistency. This is Amanda Watch. Darcy Lance sits in a solid third place. As we move into the hunt for the number one plate in the 125 East, it's come down to two riders, Treadwell and Holmans. Both riders with three moto wins, but Holmans with a much more consistent ride in the 125 East. Treadwell's had some bike problems. Now he sits 18 points back. Holmans, all he has to do is ride a consistent race day, and he'll have this championship locked up. Treadwell, on the other end, has to bang bars, get two moto wins, and hope that Holmans DNS. Um, I feel good growing up in New England. Uh, you know, in the spring and fall, we start racing in March, you know, back home, and it, it's always muddy. A lot of stuff can go wrong in a mud race, and just, uh, it's just the guy that keeps his head and just, you know, he keeps his bike going, too, you know, that's a, that's another factor. You know, bikes overheat really easy in the mud, so just got to try and stay out of trouble and just uh, go out and, and try to win. Oh, Canada, 
we stand on guard for thee. A little crackly at the end there, Travers. I didn't know you had the stones to do it. You called my bluff. Great job bringing the old Canada National Anthem here to Wall. Kingsley with the point for the first 125 moto riders are on the line. I think, Brian, we're just going to settle back and let these 40 riders come into the first corner here as Kingsley goes to five. This is Walton, Ontario, 125 moto number one. As usual, looks like Carly's down. Let's see who gets the whole shot. It looks like right now, Holmans is out in front. What a start, first 125. This is what the Simon needs to clinch. He's out front. We've got another Quebecer, Simon Mazzillo, in second place on that KTM. Mike Island and Treadwell make a connection there, battling for fourth. And it's uh, Matt Maximoff, Diablo Honda rounds up the top five there, Mark. Brian, talk to me about racing in these kind of conditions. Obviously, getting a start is crucial. We saw Holman's out in front. He's got the clear air. He doesn't have to worry about Roos. Already, though, Treadwell. Is that Treadwell or Island firing his goggles up? Not even halfway through the first lap. Yeah, Island fired off the goggles. You're going to see a lot of that. It's going to be just brutal for these guys getting the mud and rocks right in their uh, open eyeballs. Really important here not to follow. We stress that week in, week out. In these conditions, though, you cannot follow. The rider in front of you could fall so easily, and if you're in that same rut, game over for you also. It happened to me on the amateur day here on this muddy track. The conditions at Walton all week have been sketchy. Look at this, Maximoff, he moved into third place, but then Treble went on that inside line on a high bank turn. He takes over third. Now Maximoff on the inside. Treadwell up as they go into the elevator section, past the tunnel jump, getting ready to drop there. Oh, and Treadwell goes wide. He loses traction. Maximoff into third place over the natural double. Did you see the drive for Maximoff? He just hooked it up perfectly. Treadwell out there in the deep stuff, just mired down. Right, there was a rider down there as they hit into that left hand. That might have been Bazile, so that would have put Maximoff in the second and Treadwell in the third as we look at the quagmire. Continuing Mitchell Cook with his hands full. Yeah, Mitchell Cook, you know, doesn't even look like he can get on to remount. We'll see what happens there by the end of the moto. Excellent overhead view, but not a lot going on on the track. These guys are just battling here to try and sort themselves out. And I think they're more battling with themselves, trying to stay upright and not crashing. That is the key out here, to finish the race. Well, you talked earlier on about uh, how you ride a bike in these conditions and how you want to you know, stay off the clutch because the clutch can get burned so easily here. As we see a Honda rider, I think that's Turek. He's off in the roof, bar. He's going squirrely. Look at this. He can't even get going. These are professional racers. They're doing donuts out here like a couple fledgling amateurs. Unbelievable. The rain is just pouring. Holman's got a great lead, staying a little cleaner, but just soldiering through here. You can't barely pick a line because the mud's dictating where you go. Mike Island. And oh, Island has got some problems in that back section. And think of this, Brian. That's a very flat section of the track. Look at how deep that mud is. Looks like Island has gotten by Treadwell. Island's in second place right now, I think, Mark. And uh, look at him squirreling out. The rain pouring. These bikes are just getting packed with mud. Overheating will be a problem. Again, clutches will be a problem. You're going to see a lot of these guys out with mechanical problems. Right as we see Derek Fisher with the high line getting past the Honda rider. Talk to me about line decisions here. Where do you go? I mean, do you, do you just go where the bike takes you or do you, you try and maintain the inside line? A little bit of both, Mark. You do want to maintain inside line. Maybe go where most of the bikes before you have gone. They kind of make a dry route. As you can see out here, though, it's just a mayhem, just a mix of lines all over the track. And, of course, you're going to try. Like, look at how this rider's looking for some grass, looking for any type of bite. That's Kale Anderson there on the Suzuki doing a great job running in the top five here in the national race. Following uh, 69 Ryan Lockhart, it looked like he had uh, a nice line over top of that jump. Maybe some of the water is washing away, getting some traction down below. Back with number 12, Mike Treadwell on the Morgan Racing Suzuki as he heads through the elevator section. Well, they call the mud a great equalizer, and that's how you can get riders who aren't usually running in the top, you know, group in a mud race. All of a sudden, they're heroes. They're running at the front of the pack, so it's great for these young guys that can just stay up 
not make a name for themselves. Mike Treadwell moving into third place as he gets past Island. That puts Matt Maximoff back in second, Brian. Great for Matt. You know, you can ride sand. Generally, you can ride the mud. These sand specialists like Treadwell and Maximoff doing well out here in the mud. It's a situation where you want to keep the front end light, your weight back. Of course, always have to keep the throttle absolutely pinned and just kind of let the bike go where it wants to go. Just keep the front end light in your hands. And you can see Holman's up front paddling along, using his feet as outriggers. These are techniques that really aren't used in the drive, but out here it's survival. Doing anything they can to stay upright. Mesley and number 69, Ryan Lockhart, going at it pretty hard. Does Mesley do the natural double? Oh, the best that he can. Then Honda Rider still in the mix now, riding in the top 10. Lockhart, Toys for Big Boys Honda doing a great job also. Both these guys got Bondi prepared engines as well as Maximoff. The Admiral using uh, Bondi engine works for their modifications this year. Number 606, Ma Maximoff for the Diablo Racing Performance Team in second place. Brian, here's the question right now. Four stroke or two stroke on this terrain? Great question, Mark. I would have to definitely go with the four stroke 250F. Yeah, such a long torque curve. Modified 125 puts out about 39 to 42 horsepower with very little torque. These modified 250X, 35 horsepower, but with a torque band from about 7,200 to 12,000 RPM, constant right across the board, making it a much more user-friendly motorcycle. Yamaha has done a spectacular job of engineering in that four-stroke 250F. Well, and it's all about traction as we see Mesley battling Anderson. Now we're back with Ryan Gold, who is riding a 250F. Four-stroke, he went down. He's got some problems. Talk about dirty control, Brian. You mentioned it. You do not want to go down on this terrain. Goldie's first race back from his ankle injury. He ride awesome. He was in fifth place there. Went down, lost some positions. We'll see if he can get back into the fray as Mesley just going wide there. Look at that. Using all the momentum from the downhill to try and get up, and he's still paddling along. Our leader, number 24, Simon Holman, still out front comfortably. Nobody around him. This is the kind of race he was looking for, I think. Absolutely. Dan rounding down. There's Fisher in fourth place paddling around. Look at Island. These guys are going at a snail's pace. Oh, Ryan Lockhart walking. Look at the mud on that young man's face. Zonti Jr. out of this first 125 moto. Look at Matt Maximoff giving it everything he's got and he's not even battling anybody but himself. Look at this. This is a straightaway. This is the easiest part of the track and these guys are squirreling all over, fighting for every yard they gain. Mike Treadwell right now in third place as he gets a pit board from mechanic Jim Young. Heads into that off camera, that left hander. Look out for the trees, Mike. That's a tough place to uh, to ride, Brian. You just never know where you're going to lose it. Riders littered all over this track. Look at this. Every corner, every straightaway. Some out. That's Joel Saritz on the right looking around. Steve pouring off his engine. He's down. He's out. He's toast. Machine Racing's number nine, Chuck Mesley, still soldiering along. He is in third place in the points right now. Oh, here we go. Mr. Fisher pulling number 21 out of the mire. Oh, that's Derek's dad pushing with his title sponsor, his Uncle Jim Fisher, Cycle City, pushing along. They're dejected. They're done. Derek Fisher not had the Eastern Series he was hoping for. A fast rider. He was in fifth place, or he, he was in fourth place, Brian, when he went down. Tough break for him. Look at Simon Holmes doing whatever he can to lighten up that motorcycle coming down into the off cameras. What he's doing there, Mark, is he's kicking mud and debris out from around his shifter and on his boot. Here, there's so much mud gathered up on the boot and around the controls, it's hard to get to the shifter and back brake. They just get packed right up. Very dangerous coming into the corner if you can't hit your brake. Boy, it's amazing to watch how aggressive Matt Maximoff is on this track. I would think that you'd want to pull back a little bit because aggressive moves are going to cause you to go down as far as I'm concerned. Fine line, Mark. Fine line there. you got to you know, maintain some uh, aggression to keep moving. And uh, Sarix is back up and running. Good to see. He's up, but he uh, definitely looks a lap down. Number 20. 24, Simon Holmans on his final approach, getting ready to take the checker flag, which will be the first one to win here at Walton. Simon Holmans, Yamaha YZ 250F checker flag. First 125 motor here from the Transcan. Great job for Holmans on that Moto Limite privateer four-stroke 250F. Two points to clinch. No surprises in the top three, but how about Guy Giroux? He's an enduro champion, finishes fourth. Island and Anderson rounding out sixth. Bazel, Milo, and Alar take the top yep. 10. I went and looked at the track. It doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of wood chips and stuff on it, and it looks very good right now. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, I have nothing really to lose. I just, uh, you know, 
I'm in second right now. If I stay in second, uh, you know, that's what happens, but I'm going to go for it. Wake up this morning, you couldn't believe your luck, the conditions. I think this favors you today, if, if nobody else. Yeah, you know, the first round in Nanaimo was the same way, but uh, I feel good, you know. My Richmond Gallagher House hockey's working awesome, and uh, I just want to go out there and uh, I'm going to pull off two moto wins and uh, see how the other guys are And ever cheerful Darcy Lance. Great heart from that kid, always smiling. Good shot of Y here. Look at the foam on the helmet. That's so the mud doesn't stick. That mud weighs a ton. And with all that mud on the helmet, it can drop over the rider's eyes. Here's a trick a lot of us learned last year from 250 champion Doug Dubach taping the knobby tires in muddy conditions so those knobs don't clog up with mud mark, ensuring a good bite on the start. First 250 moto on the line. Kingsley to five. Brian, we're going to let these riders come right into your living room. 4250s. Here we go. Out the top looks like Woods has got a problem. He's down, roost everywhere. Lange out in front. Morgan in second place. Smale in third, but no Smale gets into second. Morgan back to fourth is Doobie with a huge charge. Toomey just goes from fourth to second like that. Casey Johnson looks like he's struggling a bit. He's got fifth though, which is a great start for that Suzuki rider. Ryan, talk to me about the difference between riding a 250 on this track and the 125s. These bikes have got a lot more horsepower to work through the mud. Yeah, modified to modified. We're talking uh, almost 20 horsepower more for the 250, so a lot easier for them to do the climbs and a lot easier on the engines. They're not going to have as many failures as the 125s. How do these uh, mechanics set up the bikes in these muddy conditions? Are they working special tires? Are they going to go with the sand tires like you were saying in the 125? Yeah, the tires are uh, the obvious choice, but uh, the, the mechanics are going to stiffen up the suspension because there's going to be an extra 30, 40 pounds of mud on these bikes. They stiffen up the suspension. They use foam L where too all around the engine cases they use foam around the brake and the shifter to prevent all that clogging so a few little tricks that these guys will pick up from mud races darcy lynch out in front right now familiar place for him in the mud brian if we think back to round one in the naimo marco dubay in second and number 445 lance smale in third look at this casey johnson in the mix not knowing necessarily he's a mud rider yeah california boys aren't usually mud riders look at rusty holland california boy does the big step down gains a possession on uh looks like 99 mike craig that is Mike Craig. Uh, Holland really showing his stones out here. Great job doing the big jumps. Goes for the natural double, decides not to. That could be a scary landing in the mud. Well, it looks to me like the track is starting to dry out a little bit, which would uh, pose for some great racing, not only in this race, but the race is coming up later in the day. Here's a shot of John Sebastian Walker, early riding in eighth place. He has to ride a smart motor ride. He's got to stay on his bike because he's got to finish in the point hut. Look at how scary it is up there. Even for a rider of the talent of Wah, you can see him having troubles with the lines out here sidestepping his bike trying to keep it upright and Juan just gets passed by number 490 Thomas Osmoslowski unbelievable for him we haven't seen it in the look at Lance does the natural double lands in a flurry of debris flying everywhere oh is his bike dialed in that pro circuit suspension now Dubé with the 420 oh, oh Dubé his feet right off the pegs there Jumps it by a mile. Marco Dubé with some stones. You know the guys that don't like getting on the pipe and getting on the gas board in that double in these crazy conditions. Osmolowski is now ahead of Jean Sebastian Wah, faltering down in the off cameras. His track is taking prisoners. Oh, Wah just parks it there. There's a bit of an incline there. Morgan doing the natural double. Nice landing for Blair, looking real good. See those rags hanging off him. Those are for Blair to dry his hands as Holland's parked. Pacific Yamaha's Rusty Holland had a great start. Now it looks like he's got some mechanical problems. Here's Iron Mike Treadwell creating new lines on the track. Brian, what was that all about? I don't think he could have got going any other way. It's almost impossible to back up. He had to cut the course there, knock the banner down. I don't think the officials will be docking him for that in these extreme conditions. And you can see these riders just paddling along. Darcy, though, great out front. Yeah, Darcy Lane. Right now, number four out in front, leading this race, got the whole shot. Sebastian Waugh had gotten by uh, Pedro Gonzalez. That put him in fifth place. Darcy Lanzo looking very smooth out here. It looks to me like John Sebastian Waugh now starting to pick up the pace. He's got to get out there, get some clean space, not get into any roost, and just ride his own race. You can see the shiny parts. That's right down to the hard pack. No traction there at all. 
Darcy doing a great job. Look at that natural double. Just great. When you look around, though, you can see that they've scraped all the topsoil off the track. You look at the edges of the track, you can see where a bulldozer has scraped a lot of the mud off. Track actually looking a lot better than the 125s. They did a bunch of work before this race. Actually not looking too bad out there, all considered. No, if uh, things stay the way they are, this is going to pose for some awesome racing in those next two motos. I mean, look at it. Dubé's a little squirrely through here, but there's some good lines starting to develop. Blair Morgan on the pipe. You saw him on the natural double. Darcy Lange doing it as well. We knew if the track was too bad, they wouldn't do those kind of jumps, Brian. Exactly. There is a good line starting to form. Here's the Treadwell line now. You can see a, a full groove developing. These riders are starting to use that inside line. In these conditions, you're going to look for any advantage possible. It's all about survival in this moto, Mark. And surviving is what Darcy Lange is doing right now out in front. Here's the battle for sixth place. Pedro Gonzalez has got Craig Decker all over him. Gonzalez with the big power slide on the inside. Decker goes way wide, and it looks like Josh Woods is coming up right behind them. Look at how they're on absolute opposite ends of the track. You know, Woods going wide. Decker makes the pass. Woods around the outside to see what he can do. He's got the momentum on Gonzalez. Gonzalez loses two positions in that one little section. Decker looked like he got by him in the straightaway. So you're right, Brian. Nice outside or borderline line for Decker. Let's see. Oh, no. Gonzalez is taking that inside. Treadwell line makes up some ground on Woodsy. But uh, Woods is going to have nothing to do with it. No, Woods stays out front. Definitely, I think uh, Woods might try that line next time around. Seeing that advantage, I think more of the riders that see it are going to start taking it. There's Lance Snell. He's just torquing that big 520 around. Man, this is just illustrating what can happen out there. You go down, scraping off the mud. Look at this rider cleaning up his helmet. He's just frustrated. Off come the goggles. He's not too pleased. Right, I think that's 490 Osmolaski. So uh, after that battle with Wah, he goes to look at this. Blair Morgan is now hot on the heels of 445 Lance Bale. This is the battle for third place. It's all about points in this last round, Brian. Blair Morgan needs these points. They're variable. Let's see. He goes inside as well again. Does he have it on Spale? Brian, that is a huge equalizer. I can't believe those guys are allowed to take that line. Morgan using everything he can. He's in race mode. These guys want results. You see that line form. How does he know? Not every other rider on the track is taking it. He's using it. The officials are going to have to get in there and either block that line or just turn a blind eye. Smale, though, is still soldiering around. Morgan doing a great job staying with him. Smale's getting great drive on this track with that four-stroke KTM of his. I'm surprised that he slows down in some areas and then gets on the gas real hard and pulls away from Blair. What they're doing is making sure the bike is completely upright and vertical before they pin that throttle. That's basically all they're doing, real gingerly on the throttle, rounding the corner. As soon as they're straight, upright, full gas, just pin it and go where the bike may go. Here you can see Morgan on the outside getting a great drive into the dock. Oh, they both do the big uh, tunnel drop away. But once again, you saw Smale get on the gas quick there. He had some great traction and was able to get some speed, making sure that he did that double jump down into the elevators. Here they come to the natural double. I don't know. It looks like uh, maybe some track consistency problems there, Brian. Uh, maybe Blair didn't want to land on Lance. He's better off to have fourth points than no points. So that could be a factor there. Dubé now lapping Casey Johnson. Johnson obviously going down somewhere. He did have that fifth place. Place, but uh, Dubé laughing him. That's it, Dubé in second place. There's Mike Craig styling it over the devil, so he's not afraid to get out there and let it happen. Number four, Darcy Lange, our race leader. Is there any question he is the best mud rider in the country, Brian? I think this is uh, solidifying that point big time. He did what he had to do. There's Hamlin now. He's taking that inside Treadwell line. But it's a huge 25, 30 foot advantage in there, Brian. There's no question those guys are going to take it. Yeah, Hagseth now on that Pacific Yamaha. He's using a Doug Dubach exhaust. Our last year's champion making exhaust systems for these four strokes. So uh, Hagseth out there with the Dr. D exhaust, he's taking that shortcut also. Still trying to get used to that 426, Brian, is winning our final round of this 2001 series. I would prefer to see him on the two stroke in this 250 class. He was so consistent on it last year, but it's a moot point right now. Here we are back with our leader, number four, Darcy Lange, comfortably out in front. We're going to go trackside with Tommy C. Mira, Tommy C, Darcy Lange mechanic. Tommy, Darcy's got an incredible lead right now. What did you say to him? Like, for the past two weeks, he's been so consistent and, like, strong out there. You, you want to know a little secret, Alex? I've been calling the guy. You know, we're back here on Eastern time. I call him about 6 o'clock in the morning, which is 3 his time. 
I leave him messages on his phone, so when he wakes up in the morning, he's uh, all stoked to put that Richmond gallon Kawasaki 250 on the podium. Whatever it takes to get your rider up in front, Brian and Tommy C's got a bag of tricks. That's right, Mark. Can't stress enough the importance of that rider mechanic relationship. The mechanic is almost like a psychologist. He has to read into his rider, know what to say and when to say it to get him jazzed up. So really important there. Blair Morgan not giving up the hunt for third place as he's chasing down Smell. Brian, the rain is starting to come down. The track is degraded. You can see it's a sloppy mess out there. Smell on the inside. Looks like they have fixed the Treadwell Insider. Morgan going really high. Let's see if he can carry some speed through here. Different line as he goes high on Smell. Billy Wallen in the way. Laffer. Morgan moves into third place, Brian. What a setup by Blair Morgan. Smell looked like he was about to respond, but Billy Wallen there being laughed kind of got in the way. I'll tell you, Blair Morgan, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Get him out on the track, though, and that aggression sure starts to surface. You see the way Dubé's bike is now starting to skittle all over the place. Earlier in the race, he was getting a lot of traction with that four-stroke KTM. As we see number four, Darcy Lange, getting the last lap flag. Darcy can't do much better than this. He's leading into the last lap. There's Waugh. He's in fourth place, determined as ever. This is all he needs for his points. We've got uh, Morgan one place ahead of him in third, so not a whole lot of changes here as far as the championship race goes. No, great ride for Waugh for sure. Look at this. Smale must have gone down because now... Number six, Josh Woods is making up some time. Oh, they freight train. Woods runs into him. It looked like Woods gave him a bump to get him going again. I don't know if that was Smale brake testing Woods in that one line. I can't see him doing that. He doesn't have eyes in the back of his head. Just going to show you can't follow out there, Josh. Yeah, you got to do whatever you have to do to get around except for a follow. You're talking about Roos Riders going down. No Chris. Oh, look at this. Darcy Lange has gone down on his last lap. Let's see if Dubé is going to make up the ground. It doesn't look like a Darcy he was able to keep that bike going as he makes his way to the tunnel jump, which will bring him to this final left-hand turn. Darcy Lange proving that he is the best mud rider in this country. Here he goes, Darcy Lange on that KX250, taking the checkered flag. First 250 moto from the trans Walton wall, Brian. Awesome setup by Tommy C, that Richmond Gallon Kawasaki crew. Darcy stands his authority as Canada's mud champion. Yeah, you know, I felt real good. My Richmond Gallon Kawasaki got me off to a wicked start. I got the whole shot. It's kind of rolled my race. See Marco behind me, and I seen I was pulling away, and Tommy was just telling me, stay up, stay up, stay up, and you know. Pro circuit suspension just worked awesome through all the ruts and stuff. The spy goggles held up for the whole race, so you know, can't say enough for all my sponsors. Number two, all those shoes, KTM Marco Dube. You got an awesome start. You drifted wide. Can you talk us through it? Yeah, you know, I figured the line just beside the box uh, was because it was a little bit drier than the other line, and you know, had a awesome jump and tried to shift you know as fast as possible and slip outside a little bit i was in top five i was pretty happy i was held up by uh, lance for a lot of the race and all his four strokes throw so much roost it's so heavy and uh yeah i uh, finally got around him i got you know started running on my own pace and uh, caught up to the leaders and uh yeah i wanted to get mark <laughs> last lap he's kind of getting all squirrely all over the place there and uh yeah, I almost got him. Huge battle between Morgan and Smale in that moto, but the big surprise was Josh Woods going down in the first turn and making it back to fifth. And how about Guy Giroux finishing out the top ten here from Wolf? So much for the reprieve from the rain. It's coming down in torrential buckets out here in Walton. Hey, Stolly, it's raining hard, buddy. <laughs> Brian, you saw the lightning. Here we are going live to the pro pits where CMRC President Mark Stalingrass and head referee Paul Kingsley have called a general assembly to discuss the weather ramifications on today's race. Lap around the uh, track on the quads here. Much of the track is uh, under very much a lot of water. They're actually swimming in it over there, and I got nowhere to even drain it. There's a I can't even link together some parts of the track to make a rideable track that's not going to have a 20 second lap time just doing circles. So I'm basing on that and uh, provisioning the rule book for ex extreme weather conditions. We're going to have to call this on a, a nine motor format. Here. Uh, that's it, that's good.